Today, I've got one of these real-time clock modules for the Arduino, and it looks like this. And when it comes to you, it's the date and time isn't set. So the first thing you got to do is set the date and time. So that's my uh, goal here. Uh, we've got some software and we got some hardware to look at and we'll do that and uh, get her done. Let's take a look at the hardware. This is the actual device. It has six pins. We're only going to use four. We're going to use ground VCC, the uh, data transmit line and the clock line. Uh, this is my diagram. You'll notice that uh, I've got things upside down. This is the ground. This is the ground. This is the VCC, VCC. That's just to keep the lines so that you can clearly see what's going on. Uh, it's quite simple. I mean, we've got the 5 volt from the Arduino connected to the VCC. We have the ground connected to the ground line. The SDA line over here is connected to the uh, analog 4 line, which is also the I2C data uh, line for the Arduino. And then we have the SCL line, which is the clock line, connected to the A5 of the analogs on the Arduino. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, the good news is the wiring is pretty simple, but I found that anytime you do I2C, uh, it's never as simple as it looks. Okay, so let's uh, move on. Let's first do a demo and prove that this works. Uh, we'll co come over here and click on compile. And when that's done, we'll upload it. Come over here. And we should get a message. Okay, so this is the instructions on how to put the enter the data. And I will use the current time. I'll start out with 30 seconds. Uh, 50, 16, so the time is 16, 50, um, and I got to keep moving. The day of the week, I believe this is a Thursday, so that would be uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That would be a five. Uh, let's see, then what do we need? We need the date, which is the 16th forgot the comma 16 and the month is 9 forgot the comma and the year is 20 so okay 30 50 and then send okay so the clock is now updated and we get a message that says if the above date and times are correct the RTC is updated and now the RTC can be safely removed, power down, and the battery on it will keep the time accurate even when the Arduino is turned off and when there's no power to the RC RTC. Okay, um, so yeah, that's it. If you want to, if you make a mistake and you have to re-enter, uh, this program requires you to reset the Arduino and run it again, which is quite simple, but as we just saw. Okay, so that's it. Uh, yeah, next. Let's take a look at the software. This is written in C for the Arduino, and our goal is to set the real-time clock module DS3231's date and time. Uh, per the hardware section, the VCC is five volts, ground is ground, the data line goes to the A4 pin on the Arduino, and the clock line goes to the A5 pin on the Arduino. We're going to include the wire.h library which is for the I2C. And we are going to set this variable name to the default location, the default I2C address of the DS3231. Okay, um, I defined this string. Uh, this is day of week list, and it starts with a null in position zero because I wanted Sunday to be one, Monday to be two, uh, etc. etc. all the way down to Saturday. So this is the day of the week from 1 to 7. Uh, I set up these bytes, these byte variables, second minute, hour, day of week, etc. to store the BCD time. So yes, we're using BCD and decimal and that makes this program a lot more complex than it would otherwise be. 
And then I've got the integer version of these uh, for the decimal variable, sec seconds, minutes, hours, day of week, date, month, and year. This is our first uh, function routine. Uh, what it does is it converts decimal to BCD, binary coded decimal, and it's going to take this value, and I've got an example over here. This is the easiest way to look at it. So if we take an example of 51, which is the decimal number, it's five tens and one one. So first we divide by 10, and that gives us a five. We're going to forget about the one, and in binary, that's a zero one zero one. Okay? Then we're going to multiply by 16, which is the same as shifting this over by four bits. So that will give us a 0101 followed by four zeros. Okay, so we go back to the 51 and we do a divide and then take the remainder. And that gives us a one, which in binary is 0001. And we take the five and the one in binary and we put them together and we end up with 01010001. And this is the BCD representation of 51. And that's what this routine is doing. So this routine is again going from decimal to binary coded decimal. We have another routine that does exactly the opposite uh, coming up in a little bit. Okay, so moving down. This routine puts the real-time clock data to the real-time clock. Uh, it has, it, we're, we're passing it seconds, minutes, hours, uh, day of week, date, month, and year. It's the same uh, set of, of uh, variables we had up higher. And again, this is going to be used to write date and time to the real-time clock. So what we start with is we begin transmission to the, to the real-time clock and this statement opens the I2C communication port to that, uh, to that device. The next thing is we write to position zero. So we're setting ourselves up to, to write to the first register. And then from here down, we're going to be writing to each subsequent register. So this uh, seconds will go into the first register. Minutes will go into the second. Hours will go into the third. Day of week fourth. Date to the fifth. Month to the sixth year to the seventh. So we're dealing with seven bytes of data. And then when we do this wire.end transmission, it ends the IT, I2C communication and it transmits the above data to the, uh, to the device. This is that other function slice routine that I discussed uh, a minute ago. This is the BCD to decimal conversion. So it's gonna take our value and it's going to uh, go from, from uh, BCD back to decimal. And again, this is what the uh, decimal version looks like. This is the BCD version. So we're gonna take the BCD version and we're gonna divide by 16, which shifts it to the right. So we end up with a 0101, which is a five and then we multiply by 10 to give us 50. So we got our 50. Then we do this uh, uh, divide and take the uh, remainder and that gives us a one. So that's these. Then we uh, concatenate, if you will, the 50 plus the one and we get a 51 in decimal. So yeah, uh, BCD always makes things harder. Every time I use BCD, I have to go back and look it up and remember uh, how it works. Next routine. This routine fetches data from the real-time clock. It has the same set of variables, except we're using pointers to the locations. We are going to open the port to the real-time clock through the I2C. We do the same thing. We write to position zero. Uh, yeah, I know you, I used a hex this time. It's still the same zero. We end the, the transmission and then we do this uh, request from the device for seven bytes. And what that's gonna do is it's going to read, it's going to read the buffer that comes back from the real-time clock. In the first position are the seconds. 
Uh, I did this here to remove the high order bit because it's unused. Um, this next thing, the next byte is minutes, third byte is hours, and what I did here is I removed the two high order bits because by definition they're not used. They could be in any state. We don't know what that those could be. Next is day of week, date, month, and year. So we have uh, gotten back from the real time clock all of the information, the date and time information we wanted. This routine is to print out the information we just got earlier. So this uh, fetches the information uh, from the real time clock. So it calls this routine up here and with the same set of parameters as, as before. Then we do a serial print. I put the year 2000 because when you get back from the real time clock, it's only two digits, it's 20. So I wanted to say 2020. So I put 20 plus the year. I print that out in decimal. Then I print the slash the separator. If the month is less than 10, then I serial print a zero. This, this puts a leading zero on a number. So if it's like nine, I want to see zero nine. If it's 10, nothing happens. Uh, serial print the month slash. Uh, if the date is less than 10, same thing. I print a leading zero. Uh, then I print the date. Then I print the day of the week, which is uh, Sunday through Saturday. And I use this uh, list that I created up earlier to convert the number into the day of the week. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, instead of like one, two, three, four, five. Uh, then hour, same thing with hour. I print a leading zero if necessary, print the hour, then a colon. Um, if minute is, uh, the next is minutes and I print a leading zero if I need that for the minutes. Uh, then I print a colon, same thing with seconds, leading zero if needed. And then I print the seconds. So that's, that is uh, what we see on the com when we open up the uh, com and look uh, and see what's scrolling by. This is where it's printed. This is the setup routine. And what we do is we uh, join the I2C bus as the primary. So we have primary and secondary. The R2C is a secondary device. Uh, then we open up the serial port that is the monitor here, which we see over here. Uh, we set up communication link at 9600 baud. Then I serial print the enter seconds, minutes, uh, the instructions basically for the user. Then I wait for the user to do input. So that's what this statement does. Uh, when there is serial uh, information available, I grab that from the, from the, uh, bar right here. And I put that data into the correct variables, seconds, minutes, hours, day of week, date, month, year. Uh, then I call that put real time clock routine. So this stuffs it into the clock, into the real time clock, the 3231. And then I go through here and I do this little routine that prints out the confirmation that the date has been changed and it's working correctly. I do that five times. Five is arbitrary. You can do it as many times or as few times as you want. And then I print the confirmation confirmation messages uh, that we saw and that's it. Then the void loop does nothing. So this is a, a one shot program that will set the real time clock for your Arduino. Okay. Well, that's it. I hope you found it useful and interesting in your Arduino programming and electronic experimentation.